So right here is a piece that I have started. I am going to be making like juggling balls with Jit Torch. So I just brought the actual juggling ball here. So then I can just show you how I would do it on more of a three dimensional piece. Cause more often than not, I don't do it on a flat slab. I do it on a piece with a lot of curves and that does come with its own um, challenges. So it's good to work through them. So the first thing you wanna do when you have your piece is make sure you have a very, very smooth surface. Um, just so when you're doing it, you don't have any like, I call them play bookers that like kind of muck up any detail. So I just have like this red rubber rib that I just go through and I really make sure everything is super, super duper smooth. I'll also sometimes use this. It's actually not a rib, it's a label scraper. They're like 50 cents a piece. So that's really nice because it's very, very cheap. And then I will go in with my first tool, which is this spiky wheel, which is actually used for sewing. So I think um, it's either used for quilting or leather work. But yeah, I just got this. Um, I like any store that sells like sewing supplies. So it's pretty easy. But I go in and I just roll it on the piece. And like say you mess up like that oops see i went sideways super easy fix you just go in with your rib smooth it back over it's like it never happened so next i will go in with my pin tool which this is just in like every um like beginning pottery tool kit so you can get pin tools pretty much anywhere and i go in and I make little dashes on the side. These I will erase later, but I'm marking these now as a guide. So then when I put my coil on top of this, I know the correct spacing. Because this spacing is very important because you, or at least what I'm going for is the look that this was created on like a machine and was like produced in a factory setting is kind of what I'm imagining these as. So spacing is very, very important. Well, from your dentist. dentist. <laughs> yeah, yep. it's called a probe sure. tool. You can also find these, I think on Amazon. It's the only other place I found these because I try to ask my friends every time they go to the dentist, I'm like, can you give me like one of those tools? And I think um, their dentists like never give it to them. So you just go through and you kind of scratch over all those dots we made. This is just to scratch it up so then when you add your coil, it has something to stick to. And you just grab my clay. And this is just a normal, like, white stoneware. You want to make sure your clay is on the softer side when you're doing this because you don't want any accidental cracks when you're rolling them. When I'm rolling it, I just use my fingertips to start. You start in the middle, you push out to the side. You can already start to see it getting really long. So I'll just really cut it in half because I don't need it that long. And you keep doing this until you get it super, super thin. A little thicker than what you want the stitch um, width to be. So there will come a point where it gets so thin that I'll just have to use my fingertips. And one thing you might notice while I'm doing this is I have my sponge and a lot of times I'll just keep wiping my hands on the sponge. That's just so I'm getting rid of clay crumbs. So re or like clay boogers, I'll sometimes call them, because I really <laughs> don't want to clean those up later. Um, I've really gotten into the habit of while I'm working, I'll just, like without thinking, just clean off my tools or clean off my hands. So everything's really, really clean while I'm doing everything. So now you're just gonna take some water with your fingertips, drop it on the coil. And you don't want to sit for too long, because if you get it too soft, then the coil will just kind of break down to the point where you can't really use it. So I know I'm kind of covering this up, but oh, I go in with my pro tool and I'll kind of just lift it up. And the point is to get it 
soft enough to where you won't need slip to adhere it to. Because if you get the clay soft enough, you don't always need slip. Now I'm just kind of pressing it in with my hand to get the top thickness more uniformed and to make sure it's really, really sticking to the piece. So now you can see those little marks I made earlier are really coming in handy. The first time I did this, I didn't make the marks and I was like, well, what was the point of me using that tool then? Because the marks are covered. So now I'm going back in with this tool and I'm just going to kind of blend that seam or this side into the piece. This is just another security for me to make sure, again, this is really, really attached because since these stitches are so tiny and delicate, I really want to make sure each individual stitch is not going anywhere. I have to move my pieces around a lot because I'll work on it in like my little studio then I let it dry there and I have to move it to a kiln. So I wanna make sure at any point that I'm handling it, I'm not gonna be nervous that these little um, stitch works are gonna flake off. And this is also a good point for um, the maker to decide how wide they want their actual stitch. So you can see I'm just really like cutting into it you get a little bit of boogers but that's okay because we'll clean those up a little later now this is when the marks on the side are really coming in handy because I'm just gonna kind of slice with this tool on every single mark that I made and just lining up with those best you can I mean if they're slightly off it's not a big deal in with this tool but now I'm gonna go into each and every one of those slices and I'm gonna kind of make a V just so you get that look of like the stitch is going in and out of that clay body if some peels off you just kind of smooth it over so this is always one of my favorite parts because this is the part where I feel like this stitch is really starting to take form it is a little tedious, but I don't know. I really like the detail tedious work because everyone always tells me like, oh man, you must hate that. I'm like, no, you know, I just put on like some, an album I like or my favorite TV show and I just kind of just do my thing. So I won't do this whole line just because I don't want to take up all the time doing this little part. But you guys kind of get the idea of like that V going in and out, in and out, in and out. So now we move on to this guy. This guy's an awesome tool. I just need to I forget what brand it's called, but I got it in this little tool kit called Skilled Crafter. It has a bunch of little cool tools. Came in a nice convenient carrying case, which I was like, oh yeah, love convenience. So you can see he's very well loved because I already have masking tape on him so <laughs> the tape was starting to peel off I use it so much. And this guy is super cool just because he has two sides and it's literally just like a flat piece of metal. It's very rectangular, but this is perfect for the little detail that I'm about to do. And you kind of start in this indentation and you just kind of move around it. Again, you kind of go in and out Again, you just to get that thread look, because if you look really closely at threads, the part where the stitch goes in is really, really tiny, but then the thread on the outside kind of um, goes out a little, just because that's what fabric will, or thread will naturally do. 
you know, when it's pulled tight, it's really, really thin, but then when it's relaxed, it's a little wider. That makes sense. So I'll just do this really quick on the other side. And I'm sure some of you are noticing and thinking, but Kayla, there are clay crumbs in the, in the little holes. I'm like, don't worry guys, I didn't figure that out. Back in with this tool and you just kind of pop those out. Since they're not really attached, they come out really easily. Although sometimes when I do this, a stitch will want to pop out with it. Don't panic. You just kind of scratch that base again, put a little water down, press it down, it's good to go. Sometimes clay, some clay boogers are more stubborn than others, so you gotta go back in a couple times. But that's pretty much the base of how I do my stitch work. I will fiddle around with it a little bit and just go back in with this tool and just clean it up a little bit more. And then I'll you know, go back in with my rubber rib and get rid of all of these lines. And if you do choose to smooth it out with a sponge, I suggest getting one that you cut to have a fine point like this and just very gently going over the sides. Mm -hmm. So you don't wanna like smush it, you know? Did you come up with this yourself or were you taught something or? I just came up with it myself. Yeah. I saw, um, well, I didn't come up with the idea all by myself. There was a lady in a, a art center that I work at and she would use this tool and it would just make these dots and she would fill it in with a color to make her stitch lines. And I'm like, oh, that's really cool. But like, what if you made actual coils yes. that look like stitches? And she's like, oh, you know, that's a little time consuming. I'm like, I got <laughs> nothing but time. <laughs> so how will you like go all the way down or will you? Yeah, that's a great question. So how do you not Foam is your best up. friend. Ah. You wait for it to get leather hard and then foam. This is just from a couch cushion. Nice. So I will find couches on the side of the road or in my dumpster. And then I'll just peel off the cover and I'll just keep, I'll wash them, you know. And then um, <laughs> there's some that live under my desk. And everyone's like, do you sleep on those? I'm like, no, I don't sleep no, on them. No. It's my ceramic works. <laughs> So you don't mm -hmm. start the process until the clay is leather hard? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like this guy's maybe a little bit softer than what I would typically do it just cause um, for trialing purposes, I wanted to make sure it was soft enough if I need to fix anything. Mm -hmm. If it cracked or something, I could fix it. Mm -hmm. I actually will paint the stitch work. I make the thread a different color than the whole thing. Mm -hmm. So I have a paintbrush that I just cut down to like two bristles Ooh. and I'll paint the top and I'll paint the sides oh and I'll, goodness. I'll use underglaze. I'll put three layers on each one. So I'll have to go through each thread three times. And yeah, it's a lot. Wow. But I really do enjoy it. 